A few days ago, a video started trending on Twitter in which a car driver and a cyclist argue over German traffic regulations. And naturally, this started a very passionate discussion over on Twitter. And although I don't normally get involved in this kind of drama, I have a few things to say about this one. So, although I am not a lawyer and cannot give actual legal advice, I am going to try to make sense of what happened and who here is in the right. This takes place on a narrow residential street and the video is being shot by the driver of a car. Now, the car is at a complete standstill and can't continue because a cyclist is blocking the way. That's because there's a line of parked cars on the right, meaning that effectively there's only one lane of Available. The video begins after the car has stopped as the cyclist is taking out her phone to film the scene. So now we have a sort of a duel in which the cyclist and the car driver are filming each other. The male voice we can hear is that of the car passenger. Oh, we müssen Führerschein abgeben. Haben Sie einen? The cyclist seems to be complaining that there isn't enough room for her to pass and the car should pull over. The people in the car are arguing that there is actually plenty of room for her. And of course, as they're arguing about this, a second cyclist passes the car from behind with apparent ease, basically proving the point. Eventually, a second car draws up behind the cyclist, and in this case, the driver gets out and starts to remonstrate with the cyclist. Finally, the cyclist continues on her way, but as she passes, gives the wing mirror a smack, apparently deliberately. So what do the traffic regulations say? Well, paragraph 6 says that if you intend to pass a parked car or other obstruction and to do so you have to move to the other side of the road, you must first allow any oncoming traffic to pass, unless signs regulate otherwise. When passing parked cars, you need to keep an adequate distance from them just in case some idiot opens a door right in front of you. And when passing cyclists or pedestrians, you must give them at least 1.5 meters of room in built-up areas and 2 meters everywhere else. A lot of users have argued that putting all this together, the car driver was clearly in the wrong. The car had moved to the left to pass some parked cars and had to give the cyclist at least 1.5 meters of room. This meant it should have stopped and reversed until it could find a space where it could pull into the right. Now, does that sound right to you? The video doesn't show how far back the line of cars goes, but it could be hundreds of meters or to the end of the road. Should the car have backed up all that way? What if there were other cars behind it? Well, my non-lawyer reading of the law leads me to conclude that no, that's not what paragraph 6 of the road traffic regulations means. It clearly states that it applies when you intend to pass an obstruction. If you are already passing it when you encounter oncoming traffic, paragraph 6 gives you no help at all. I did, however, find a court case from 2013 that may help. It wasn't exactly the same situation, but it was very similar. In this case, it was two cars, one passing some parked cars and the other coming in the opposite direction. They actually bumped into each other. Now, nobody was hurt, but the second car received 1,500 euros worth of damage. And with the insurance companies not seeing eye to eye on this, a lawsuit followed. The court eventually ruled that both drivers were equally liable. Regardless of who originally had priority before the first car started the passing maneuver, the fact is that both drivers could have avoided the accident if they had stopped and just figured out between them what the most sensible thing to do at that point was. Instead, the investigation revealed that both cars just kept going until they made contact. Which makes me think that in the case with the cyclist, as long as the car was driving slowly and carefully enough, it really shouldn't have been an issue at all, and the cyclist was indeed being unnecessarily confrontational. However, there is one very important aspect to all of this, which is completely unrelated to traffic regulations, and worries me, because I think it could get the person who uploaded the video into a lot of legal trouble. You see, I had to blur out the faces. In the original, the cyclist was very clearly identifiable, and I doubt very much that she consented to the video being published. Now, there's no real problem with random people just walking about as you are, say, filming a beautiful market square. 
but make a person the main focus of your video and then publish that video in order to expose the person to public ridicule or accuse them of wrongdoing, that is definitely not allowed and the cyclist could legitimately sue. As long as the car was driving, no oh, wait what, ah, one passing in right there. The video doesn't show back, literally, that the car had to stop and reverse until it put the, that was going so well.